Okay, good morning, everyone. And welcome to our students online as well. Uh, let's begin this time with a word of prayer um, and we'll get into our class. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time once again you've given us. And Lord, even as we continue to study your word and continue to Lord, understand and know our identity in you, O oh God, we pray that uh, everything that we learn, O oh God, we will apply it in our life, but we will just not just be hearers of your word, but we will be doers of your word, O oh God. And we thank you, Lord, for this time. Uh, we commit our hearts, we commit our lives into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so uh, we'll have to pick up from chapter 33. Yes? Chapter 33 says, Fellowship in Righteousness. Now, over all these weeks we've been talking about, can you give me the key words that we've been talking about? So even in the midnight, if I wake you up and ask, what is justification? You should know it. Right. Oh, what, are we, what are the words we were talking about? Yeah, two, three, four words. Justification, sanctification. Justification, as if we have not sinned. Okay. Thank you, Gertrude. Yes, anybody else? Redemption. Redemption, yes, thank you. Salvation, okay. Yeah, very good. So all of these words are important to know because this is not for uh, others, it's for you also, right? It's for our lives, right? So let's get into uh, chapter 33. And chapter 33 is fellowship in righteousness. Now, we learned that you and I are righteous before God. We have a right standing before God. Now, what is fellowship? The meaning of fellowship is where there is two or more people gathered together, right? It's called a fellowship. In church, you have a fellowship lunch. They're having lunch alone. There's no fellowship there. It's lonely lunch. <laughs> and now in the break time, I saw all of you all were standing and talking and having tea. What is that? Hopefully fellowship. <laughs> right? So where there's two or more people, there's fellowship. Being in the presence of two or more people. Now, when we are the righteousness of God, we are in fellowship with God. Right? So that means we are with, you know, we, we, God is there. God is in us. God is around us. We're having fellowship with God, right? So anytime we can speak to God, right? We can speak to the Holy Spirit. We can speak to Jesus, right? Because we are the righteousness of God. We have fellowship, right? Now, there are three aspects as new creation that uh, uh, being made righteous in God. There are three aspects that we must very importantly understand, right? First one has to do with the right standing before God. We talked about this last week, right? When you and I have a right standing, there's no condemnation. We are as if without any sin, right? Nobody can, the Lord Jesus will not condemn us. The Lord Jesus will not say you did these things wrong, but the Holy Spirit is there to convict us of our sins. Now who brings condemnation? And devil can use people to bring condemnation. Devil can use situations to bring condemnation. The devil can use our own mind to bring condemnation. Yes or no? Right? So if, there's, if we do something wrong, we keep telling ourselves, hey, I'm useless, I'm a worm, uh, you know, I'm nothing. God, why did you even create me? I shouldn't have been born. Now, what is that called? Condemnation. God has a plan. God is saying, I have plans for you to prosper you, to give you a good hope, to give you a good future. I have created you. Psalms 139 says, I created you in your mother's womb. And now we are saying, I wish I was not born. I wish I did not live. I wish I was not, I, I didn't have these, the things around me. What is that? We are bringing condemnation on ourselves. That's the mind, right? So in as righteous people, as Righteous in the sight of God. We have fellowship with God, so there's no condemnation. Two is the quality 
of having the nature and characteristics of our Lord Jesus, meaning the nature of the new creation. Right? Now, why is this important? Nature and character. Everyone say nature, character. Right? Now, there's a small difference between nature and character. See, nature is who we, you know, it's who we are by, by, when, from, you know, when we are, when we are growing up, it's who we are, right? So in this, in the sense, for example, some of us will be very quiet people, the nature, right? And God didn't tell you don't talk. It's just in your nature, right? I prefer being quiet. There are some people who, who need friends around. Right? They need to talk. They, if they don't talk, they get nervous. <laughs> they have to talk. That's in their nature. They are, they are people, people friendly, you know, people. And then there are some of them who like silence. Some of them who like people around. This is a different nature. Some of us are, you know, you shout at them, shout at your friends. There's no response. Some of them they get agitated. They respond back, right? So that is the nature inside. Uh, some of us may look at a glass, you know, there's a there's a saying, right? You look, take a glass, fill it with half a glass of water. Now, there are two ways of looking at it. Yes or no? One is, it's hey, only half a glass of water I have. The other one is, hey, I have half a glass of water. At least better than nothing. Right? Your nature is something that God has given you. Character is something that can be developed. You understand what I'm saying? Character can change. You can change your character. It can, you can change for good, you can change for bad also. Right? Now, for example, uh, before becoming a believer, character is bad. You know, bad language or getting angry, getting upset, getting upset with parents, not honoring your parents. Right? That's, that's a character. Now, after becoming a believer, everything has changed. What's happened? Your character has changed. But the nature is still there. What is the nature? Hey, he's a quiet person. Or he's a person who's very friendly with people. The nature is still there. You get the difference? Are you understanding? Right? So character can, even, even so good believers can develop bad characters over time. Right? Uh, so character can change. And it's important that we build our character. Very important. Character is who we are when nobody is watching. Nobody is watching. In front of everyone, Jai Masiki. But in the room, there is no Masi. There is no Jesus. Where is Jesus? He's not there. Right now, that is true character. And as fellowship with God, I mean, as righteousness, as the righteous uh, people, as we stand righteous with God, remember, whether we are in an open setting or whether we are in the room alone, God is there. We have fellowship with Him. So it is our choice to see things, say things, do things. It is our choice. So we need to tell ourselves, hey, I am in fellowship with God. So if God is with me, God is in me, how can I watch this? How can I say this? How can I speak this way? You get what I'm saying? right? Now, of course, there will be times we will make mistakes, but then you come back into that. You know, so for example, this is you know, this stand here is a, you're standing with God. right? Sometimes we step out, we do something wrong. And we realize, oh man, I shouldn't have done this wrong. Oh, Lord, please forgive me. Come back to your position. Don't be there, and the devil will keep pushing us away. Ah, see, now you're, you've done one wrong, two wrongs, three wrongs. Sorry, guys. Come back. Just come back. Why? Because you have a right standing before God. You get what I'm saying, right? Third is to do with action and behavior. Being a person who does righteously and justly, and to walk in righteously before God. 
right so putting it into action just knowing is not enough right imagine there's all of us are here and we say hey let's uh, all uh, how many of you play instruments here one two three right so we play instruments imagine it's time for worship half an hour worship uh, anybody knows how to play an instrument are you saying no i don't want to play i know but i don't want to play why you don't want to play no i don't want to play but you know the instrument now does that make sense you know but you don't want to do it it's like that over here god is saying you know you are righteous you know you are justified you know you're holy showed in your actions showed in your behavior right the soul and the body need to be brought into subjection to the new creation okay let's read this romans chapter 12 and verse 2 romans chapter 12 verse 2 very very important verse okay this is your homework you got to learn this verse by heart next class i'll randomly pick somebody and say say this verse whether it's in hindi Telugu, Malayalam, Japanese, Chinese, doesn't matter. You got to know that verse. Romans 12, 2. And be not conformed to this world, but ye be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Mm. Now, Paul is writing to believers. Right? Everyone say, Paul is writing to me. Ah, what is he saying? Do not conform to this world anymore. Now they're all believers. The Holy Spirit is inside them. They are new creation already. But he's saying, do not conform to this to the patterns of this world. That means whatever people are doing in this world, you don't conform to that. But you be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Hey, everyone are going to the uh, you know party. Saturday night parties, Saturday night drinking, enjoying. That's the world. Everyone are uh, you know making money uh, by cheating one another. Everyone are doing things, you know, they're enjoying their life. That's okay. What does it say here? Do not conform. That means do not, you know, how many of you have seen a puzzle? You've seen a puzzle, right? You you put the puzzle together and you get a picture. So don't become one of the pieces of that puzzle. Don't conform to it. But you transform by the renewing of your mind. So you tell your mind, tell your mind, hey, I know that this temptation is coming, but I have to change my thinking. But you know what the devil will say, but hundreds of people are doing that. Nothing is happening to them. You also can do that is the world. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You have to tell your mind. You know, there's a saying, the mind is what? Our mind, will, emotions. It's our soul, right? The moment you win a battle over here in your mind, 90% of the battle is won. Not 90, 95%. I would say 95%. Right? Temptation comes. The moment you tell your mind, no, I'm not going to fall into this temptation, and your mind is strong, 95% of the battle is won already. All you have to do is, next step, say, hey, devil, get out. That's it. Use the word of God. First place the devil attacks is the mind. That's why Paul is saying, you don't conform. You change your mind. Change your thinking. Change the way you look at things. When you look at yourself, you look at yourself standing with Jesus in front of the Father, seated in heavenly places. Right? So what does it say here? We need to tune ourselves. We need to tell our mind, okay, no, I want to go through God's word. And then there's a body. All of us feel hungry, thirsty, sleepy. Body pain, headache, stomach pain, leg pain, all the pains will come. 
They have a body, and the body has desires. So you tell our body. Now imagine this: twenty-one days of fasting. You tell yourself, "I'm going to start twenty-one days of fasting." Next day, somebody will come with biryani. What you'll do? Okay, God, I'll start two days later. <laughs> It will happen because it's happened to me. It will happen. Everyone will say, "Hey, today is my birthday. Take samosas. Today is my uh, father's brother's birthday. Today is my mother's sister's birthday. All the birthdays, anniversaries will come in the twenty-one days." Your friends will say, "I will treat you. I'll take you to KFC. I'll treat you. Come now." The body has desires, but you got to tell yourself, right? You got to tell yourself, no, I'm going to do this for the glory of God, right? I'm going to do this now. All of you all are supposed to wake up at 5 a.m., right? It's not easy. Come on, get up at prayer, 5 a.m. But some of us struggle and get up. Then you tell your mind, hey, be transformed. Because the devil will say, cover and sleep. It's okay. But you tell your mind, "Hey, no, I'm a child of God. I'm going to think of what God is telling me. I'm going to hear what the Holy Spirit is telling me." And you learn to control, and you learn to direct your body to the things of God. So some things, some things that I do, if I feel tired, and there are times, right? See, I'm also a human being, so there are times I feel very tired in the morning. I feel like just, oh man, I don't. I tell myself, no. I want to prove to the devil that I can overcome this. So make sure that I do. Sometimes head will be aching very badly. You know, we use laptop the whole day. Headaches. What can we do? And sleep. No. What I do is I put my hand on my head. I pray in Jesus' name. Every headache be gone. I'll purposely do something that is going to cause more, you know, uh, make the devil get more angry. So I'll take out the Bible, start reading the Bible, or listen to worship songs. Right. So what is happening? I'm not conforming to the world. Now I'm not saying if you get fever, if you get headache, you know, don't rest. You need to rest, right? But what I'm saying is sometimes the enemy can use all of these. Excuses in our life. The enemy is, you know, the enemy is not afraid when we do all this. You know, uh, singing songs, all of that is good. But the moment you start, you decide to pray. The moment you tell yourself, "Hey, I want to pray and I want to fast and pray," the devil will come. He will stop you in every way. Do not be conformed to this world, but be. Tell me the word, transformed. What is transformed in Hindi? Parivartan. Yeah, be transformed. Right. So, sin is sin, and we must acknowledge it. We cannot say this. I did because even Jesus, uh, you know, he threw all the tables. So when I threw all the tables here. No, sin is sin, right? And we must call it out. We must make sure that we confess our sins and we receive forgiveness through the blood of Jesus, right? One John one seven and nine says, "But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Christ, His Son, cleanses us of all sins. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us." If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us, and He cleanses us from all unrighteousness. You know, look at this verse, verse eight. If we say to ourselves we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. You know what is deceiving ourselves? We, we try to prove ourselves right. That's what who, that's what Adam did. Right? Adam said, "No, no, no." The woman you gave me, I didn't ask for anybody. You gave Eve. 
Now she told she ate, she gave me also to eat. I ate. You gave me. We're deceiving ourselves. Now the devil can use the same. See, the devil has the same technique. Same thing. Right? Deceiving, lying, cheating, killing. That's all his thing. Same thing. But there are different ways he tries all of that. Right? So here, we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us. Right? So one good practice is every morning when you wake up, ask God, for, con you know, just confess your sins. Say, God, I may have got angry. There are sins that I have, may have done knowingly, sins that I have committed unknowingly. Forgive me. Cleanse me with your blood and get me back. Get me back into a right standing with you. And what does it say here? He cleanses us of all sins. So we can go and ask God for forgiveness. Right? So let's go to the next chapter, which is Christ our sanctification. Okay, what is sanctification? Yes, go ahead. Uh, Akil, you want to use the mic uh, so that the students also can hear? Akil. After sanctification is set apart. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Gertrude. Uh, we have a question here from Akil. Yes, go ahead, Akil. So for Matthew 26, uh, chapter 26, verse 41. Hold on, let me get there. Matthew 26, verse 41. Mm. says, uh, watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. Mm. The spirit indeed is willing, mm. but the flesh is weak. Yes. So in some scenarios of life, you know, when there is a battle between the flesh and the spirit mm. for any decision making. So is this was only confined only towards prayer? Or how do you elaborate that uh, in the context that we just discussed? The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Yes. So, so what we discuss right now, so Here's the thing, the this, this spirit go in, in our hearts, now we know that, okay, let's take an example of uh, an alcoholic, right? 20 years he's been drinking. Morning, he wakes up, first thing he drinks, no breakfast. Then he does everything else. Now suddenly he's become a believer. After becoming a believer, it's a week now, he knows that, hey, my body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. And it is wrong to drink. It is something that God has said, don't do. Now, the spirit is willing. But he's been doing this for 20 years. His body has become, physically, his body has become immune to it. He cannot function. Right? Physically, he cannot function. If he has to start his day, for 20 years, he's been having a drink and then starting his day. Now, he's become a believer. He knows it's wrong. He knows that I should not be drinking my body, but he's not able to function because his body has been got immune to it. Now the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So that's where he or she will have to stay, take ground, meaning he will have to say, no, God, there'll be a phase, right? And that's where the Holy Spirit can help us Right? But he may have to go through. See, there are two things. Sometimes God just delivers us completely. Right? No more of the previous, no physical uh, you know, uh, residues of what we were there before. But there are times God allows us to go through those physical challenges, those, that strenuous time. Uh, and, and that could be like a training for us. Right? So I know a lot of people who have been drug addicts. They've come, they've become believers. Some of them, you know, even if they, you know, even if there's a smell, they, they cannot take it. Now, 20 years they've been, you know, into all of that. But now with the smell, they cannot. They feel, you know, like uh, nauseous. They feel like vomiting. But there are some people who I know that they had to go through a very difficult time. Right? So in that case, uh, Akil, what I would say is, the spirit is always, remember we talked about it, the, the, our old spirit has gone away. We get a new spirit. So we know, right? we may not know everything in the Bible, but we know, hey, drinking is wrong. Watching pornography is wrong. We know it, but our flesh is still desiring it. Right? 
So the flesh is very weak. Look at Jesus right? in the Garden of Gethsemane. Actually, that, then you see that Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane. He's saying that. Yeah, now, Jesus' spirit was willing. But his flesh was definitely you know, feeling tired. How am I going to take on this whole thing? Right? Of course, it, he was not afraid of it. But there was this physical, you know, you know, intense stress. You sweat in blood. Jesus' sweat, sweat was like in blood. So physically, he had to go through some kind of pain. It was not like Jesus said, OK, when is the cross? Tomorrow afternoon, what time? 3 o'clock. So we start at 12 o'clock. And then we go up the mountain. OK, done. No. There was so much of physical torture that he had to go through. So there are times when we may have to go through those physical pains. There are times when God just delivers us completely. Uh, but even af after we become believers, there are those natural physical urges right, that we have. Uh, as human beings, we will have. And when we look at uh, you know, teens and youth, you know, their hormones are uh, high up, and so uh, they go through these hormonal changes. So it's very important to keep a track. You know, Paul says, uh, I keep my body in check. And the Apostle Paul says, I, I crucify my body. I'm crucified with Christ. Right? It's not I, but Christ who lives in me. Yeah, so Akil, that, that's a fight we have to go through. Right? Uh, so it's not like always God can deliver us completely. So in this context, again, yeah, the, the spirit is willing. Uh, for each one of us, the spirit will definitely be, be willing. Right? I, I'm sure all of us like to worship and pray. Right? But if I say 3 o'clock, 3 a.m., get up, let's worship and pray. Oh, I like it. But physically, I want to sleep. Right? So that's when we push ourselves. Right? I'm just giving these examples. Okay, so, um, so that's the thing. Right? OK, um, chapter. 34, Christ our sanctification. Right. Sanctification, Lucy is saying, set apart, right? Thank you. Set apart, made holy, consecrated, separated from sin, set apart for God, right? Uh, when we we've just bought a guitar for the Bible College, it is sanctified for the Bible College, set apart for the Bible College. Nobody else can come and say, hey, I want this. Set apart. I'm, I'm trying to make you understand uh, yeah, in the natural itself, right? We are set apart. We are made holy. Um, and we have the noun, the adjective there, uh, hagiosmos, which is translated holiness and sanctification, which means uh, here uh, the first one is hagios, which means sanctified. And the next word is the noun hagiosmos, which is we are the holiness of God or we are the sanctification of God. And then the adjective hagioi, which translates sanctified ones or holy ones. So you and I are saints in God's eyes, right? We are saints, 1 Corinthians 1.30. But of him, you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us the wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Ephesians 1.4 Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. This verse is very interesting. He chose us before the foundation of the world. He chose us. And now in Christ, we are holy and we are without blame, right? Uh, so if we go on, we see that we've already talked about it, righteousness, no condemnation. Holiness means there is no wickedness in us. Right? That's what holiness is. Are we the holiness of God? Sometimes we feel like holes. We don't feel holy, right? We feel we have a hole in ourselves. Being the holiness, we being God being holy and his character, his nature going coming into us, you and I are holy. So when God is seeing us, he's saying you're a holy person. Now we, nowadays we make fun, no? Hey, don't be such a holy person. 
we say that right friends say that to each other don't be so holy right you say yes i am holy cuz by saying that right yes gertrude you raise your hands first i have a question say say before the foundation of the world yeah why some people saved and not others faster uh oh, so your question is sorry gertrude does your voice is echoing can you repeat that again so we are saved before the god chose us before the foundation of the world to be holy and without blame yes in his love so why some people are chosen and not the others yeah so that's a good question got to see we must take text and put it into context right now yeah. what is the context of ephesians chapter 1 ephesians chapter 1 the apostle paul is talking to the believers and he's saying this is your identity you're seated in heavenly places in christ jesus so if you look at that first chapter everything is in christ jesus right okay. so to answer gertrude when the see jesus paid the price when we believe in jesus right he he has basically he's saying here he he chose us in him before the foundation of the world which means before the foundation of the world jesus god decided there's going to be the cross and before the foundation of the world god decided that those who believe in the blood of jesus those who believe in jesus christ will have all these blessings so paul is writing to the believers and saying hey you know the cross is not an afterthought it was not a second idea before the foundation of the world god has seen you god yeah. has seen you. and now when you believe all these blessings will come if i don't believe what will happen okay nothing will happen so sure. yeah <laughs> but there are some people who believe uh, pastor but they are not saved sorry there are some who believe but they are not saved yeah yeah no so believe is no so here's the thing gertrude you can know about god but you there's a difference about knowing about god and knowing god so there okay. are many people from different faiths who are learning in lifestyle evangelism there are many Mr. people you, you have to have a relationship with the lord yes yes that is the key right so okay. if i just know about jc see i know about all you know all of us know about other religions yes right but we believe in jesus there's a relationship there right so just because people know about jesus doesn't mean they are believers okay right so now, so if you look at it i know what you're trying to bring out you're trying to say okay predestination uh, in the same chapter paul, the apostle paul yeah. talked about predestination as well but no once we are in christ all of these blessings comes what if i don't accept jesus blessings won't be there very simple okay. Right? I will be living outside the covenant of God. The moment I come in covenant with God, all these blessings are given to me, free of so cost. So, anyone even in future they come, they this is they'll also get these blessings. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Pastor. Yes. Yes. All right. Welcome. Okay. So, God brought us into Christ. He made us righteous, and Christ now is our sanctification. Now. Here's the thing I want to just emphasize. Do you believe that you are holy? Do you look at yourself as a holy person, as a child of God? Very important to do that. Now, where did you get this holiness from? Is it by reading the Bible? Is it because you did uh, BTH or M Masters in Theology? is it because you are a worship leader is it because you have a you're a pastor is it because you're born in a christian home where did you get this holiness from is it because you're rich where does this holiness come from so it's like god is saying once you believe in me you, you are holy now you don't keep telling yourself i know i'm not holy no you are holy you keep declaring what you are you say what you are you are holy you are sanctified but i feel like i've done so many sins go back to jesus ask forgiveness you're holy again right it's like this you know you 
you know, I'm just going to use this example, right? Imagine you're riding the cycle or a bike and you fall into the drainage. I don't know how, but you fall into the drainage. And somebody picks you up, hey, come. They make you stand here, they fix a pipe, and then they spray water all over you. Right? And all that drainage water comes off, and now you are washed. Picture it that way. Hey, living in sin, come back to Jesus. Jesus will wash by the blood, clean. Your identity has been restored. Right? Right. So 35, we are sanctified in Christ Jesus. Right? The same thing. Um, we are not sanctified on our own. We are not holy because of our background, because we are, uh, you know, English speaking, Canada speaking, Hindi speaking. Doesn't matter. We are not sanctified by anything of this world. Right? We are not sanctified because every month we do five days of fasting and prayer. No. All of that is important. But we are sanctified because of what Jesus did. The Bible also says we are sanctified by the word of God. His word cleans us, sanctifies us, removes off all the dirt, all the things of the flesh is removed by the word of God. Right? God completes the work and then he invites us to live out what he has done for us. Right? Uh, 2 Corinthians 7 and verse 1 says, Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Right, look at that verse. Therefore, having these promises, before that, he talks about the promises, and he says, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves. Who's going to do the cleansing? Who has to go to the place to get cleansed? We have to go. And Jesus will cleanse us. There is, there is never a time Jesus will say, this sin is too much. Can Jesus say that? Or will Jesus say that? This is the biggest sin you have done. I will come back after five days of fasting and prayer. Will Jesus say that? Never. It doesn't matter what sin it is. When you come to the, G to the Lord Jesus, he will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It says here, he, he, uh, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and the spirit. Meaning, there are things that we allow, spirits, demonic works, that enter into our lives, that allow us to walk in the things of the flesh. If we open doors to the devil, right, the devil is not going to say, hey, this door is open, close, you're a believer. He will run into that door. So it's, that cleansing is what we have to go through. Right? Romans 8.13, for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit, you will put to death the deeds of the body. Right? So Akil, it answers a portion of your question. But if you live by the Spirit, you put to death the deeds of the body. All the things of the flesh, you will be able to overcome by the Spirit. You know, every time I read the book of Acts, I... It just blows my mind. You think of this, the Apostle Peter and all the other uh, apostles, the disciples of Jesus, all are scared, all are crying. Where is Jesus? Oh, they killed Jesus. Some of them are hiding. But the same people are filled with the Holy Spirit. What are they doing? They are standing in front of people, in front of everyone, in front of the Pharisees front of the uh, you know, Roman gods, everyone, and they're preaching the gospel. Same person filled with the Holy Spirit. If you live by the flesh, we will be weak and we will die. But if we live by the Spirit, we will overcome our weaknesses. We will overcome the deeds of the flesh. Do we have weaknesses? Yes. So you ask God, God, help me to live by the Spirit. Help me to look at you know, always ask the Holy Spirit for help. Jesus knew 
that if these people, these disciples, have to stand for my name, they can't do it on their own. They need the Holy Spirit. Right? That even when Stephen was dying, can you think of that? Stephen, they're taking stones, throwing it on Stephen. What is Stephen saying? Oh, no, don't kill me. I'm still young. I will need to get married. I need to have children. There's so much to do. Did he say that? What's he saying? I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of the Father. And he says, Father, forgive them. Now, who can do that? You can't do it in the flesh. Not possible. In church history, I'll, show, I'll tell you this example. In church history, there was a man named John Hyde. They wanted to kill him because he was a Christian. So the Romans said, if you don't, if you don't deny Jesus, we will tie up your wife and your children and we will burn them in front of you. This man said, OK, you have one last choice. You either do this or will you kill your entire family? You know what he said? He said to his wife and children, don't be afraid. I'll see you in heaven. Is it a natural thing? In the natural, can we do it? Possible. Even saying it, I, we feel so hurt and we see, feel so overwhelmed. But he said that. He said, don't be afraid. I will never deny Jesus. Do what you have to do. Was there pain? Was there grief? Yes. But he says, I'll see you in heaven. There are plenty of stories in Old Testament. Oh, sorry, not in the Old Testament. Plenty of stories in the early church where people have given their life. Why? Because they're not living in the flesh. They're living in the spirit. Spirit of God. When the spirit of God is in us, we will overcome all these temptations of the world. Right? So we are saints in Christ Jesus. Chapter 36, 1 Corinthians 1 and 2. Uh, to the church which is at Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints with all who are in every place, call on the name of the Lord Jesus, name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours. Now, the it's interesting to see that Paul addresses the believers as saints. What is the Hindi word for saints? Saints, saints. Bhakt. Um, Bhakt. Sanyasi. Sorry? Some Bhakt pastor. Okay, okay. I, I'm not sure what it is. So some of them over here are saying sant. Right. So Jesus, Paul is saying, you're a saint. Now, you don't have to go do higher studies and you know do hundreds of things to become a saint in christ jesus you are a saint story is over people call you hey don't be a saint you know you can do this one thing no nothing will happen hey you say no i am a saint bible saying look at romans 1 7 to all who are in rome be beloved of god call to be saints Ephesians 1.1, 1, 1, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, to the saints in Ephesus. Philippians 4.29-21, greet every saint in Christ Jesus. Colossians 1.2, to the saints and faithful brethren in church who are in Colossae. So a believer is a saint. The word saint is, you know, if you look at the Catholic church, they have a certain way of saying, okay, you have reached this place of holiness, so now you become a saint. Saint Paul, Saint Peter, we have that? Now everyone say saint and put your name to it. Ah, some of you are not saying it. Don't be afraid to say it. <laughs> right? That's what you are. Say it loud, come on. Yeah. Right? You tell the devil, hey, I'm a saint. Right? 
just as saint apostle saint paul and saint peter and all those disciples all those great men and women of god you and i also are saints right as a believer he has imparted to us the attributes and the nature of god and you and i have the holiness of god second timothy 1 9 who has saved us and called us with a holy calling not according to works but according to his own purpose right this lucy says practically speaking at home we pray study god's word be good to our family members when we have get togethers or relations there are gossips talking movies how do we adapt ourselves in the midst of such situations right um yeah that's a good question lucy see as believers so lucy's question is now we're all believers uh we want to you know do everything that we do we want to honor god but what if you know you have a good you have a family get together or you have friends coming together you know you just have a small family function right and there everyone are talking about movies about gossiping about people people are uh, you know your friends or your relatives and family members are talking about wrong things or uh, things that are not right uh, how would you as believers react right so lucy also has commented here he's saying uh, how do we adapt to such situations to you know just keep quiet uh, smile and be quiet yeah so what we can do is what i do is intentionally if there are times when um, it's happened right there are times when people uh, especially when i was working in the corporate sector uh, before joining there were friends that I had, and they would suddenly start talking about, you know, hey, this person did this, or his wife did this, his, and talking bad about the managers. You know, he's like this, or she's like this, and uh, this company is like this. So there are times I've just walked out. I've just walked out. Why? Because that is not important to me. I want to make sure that what I hear, what I, I, I am in fellowship with, the right things right but when it's a family setting you know we may not always have to walk out but what we can do is as you said lucy we can just keep quiet and you know politely we can say just excuse me and you can just walk out of that situation uh, or, or you can just say hey can we change the topic you know can we talk about something else and if there are times when people are watching you know movies and uh, and you feel that you don't want to be part of the movie, you can just politely step out and say, no, it's okay. Uh, so yes, Lucy, the good thing is to politely tell them, right? Uh, now, the wrong thing to do is to start, uh, is to go in front of the TV and open the Bible. Okay, off the TV, and this is what the Bible says, right? Uh, obviously, we don't want to do that, but we can politely just say, no. Right? So even sometimes my, my old friends in, in in the corporate sector where I was working, they used to have parties. They used to say, come, let's go for movies, let's go for resorts, and uh, we'll stay there for two, three days. Uh, but I too felt, okay, I want to be with them. They're my friends. But I knew what is more important. And we must understand what is more important. What is more important, being in the resort with all of them, or is my holiness and uh, my standing with God more important. I also like to enjoy with my friends. I like to, but this is more, takes priority. I said, no, it's okay, I won't come. You guys carry on. Hey, why don't you come? Sorry. Right. So you take a stand on certain things. Right. All right. All right, so we'll stop here. We'll pick up from uh, uh, chapter 37. Uh, next class, we'll try to do our best. Everyone understanding, right? Everyone are able to follow? Uh, okay. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Those who are online, thank you. Have a good week. God bless.